right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from San Diego as usual. And today I am joined by Mabel Katz, who is up in Los Angeles. How are you doing, Mabel? How are you doing, John? Great to uh, be here with you. Yeah, I'm doing great. And Mabel is an author, inspirational and keynote speaker, seminar leader, transformational coach, peace ambassador, and boy, we need more of those. Um, <laughs> and today we're here to talk about uh, Mabel's new book, Zero Frequency, The Easiest Way to Peace, Happiness, and Abundance. And who doesn't want that? Yes. So, um, Mabel, do you want to just start off, give me a little background as to why you wrote this book and where the ideas came from? Yes, so I'm originally from Argentina. I've been living in Los Angeles for the last 36 years. But I would say the last 10, I have been traveling all over the world with this message. I used to be a tax accountant here in, in LA, and I was a very successful tax accountant. Right. But uh, one day I woke up, like I said, uh, my oldest son talked to me angry, the way I used to talk to him, and he woke me up. So I mm. started my search for happiness and peace. Abundance I had. But I was uh, lacking peace and happiness, and I realized I was looking for it in the wrong place. So I started my search. I discovered spirituality uh, that is, has nothing to do with religion. Yes, no, please do not confuse. Uh, so it is about finding that everything that you need is inside of you, and that happiness and peace, you can only find it inside, and it doesn't depend on, on your success or how many houses, or how much you have in the bank. So what does zero frequency mean? Okay, so zero frequency means to be at peace no matter what is going on around you. That is like a certain vibration. Yes, we are energy. So if you are at the peace vibration, you are going to attract certain things. If you are buying fear, for example, you are vibrating at the low uh, energy mm -hmm. uh, field. You are in the low energy field. So uh, we, re we need to realize we are creators. We are creating our own life, our own destiny. It depends on our decision. So maybe I, I feel the fear, but I do it anyway. I take action right. instead of sitting with the fear, you know? Or instead of blaming and complaining, I take 100% responsibility. So now I am the powerful one. I created mm -hmm. it. I can change it. Mm -hmm. you know, yes. Otherwise, we are always blaming and waiting for something to happen outside of ourselves. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's one of the biggest things, though, is that concept of, of accountability. Because most people, when you ever say to people like, uh, you know, accountability, they go, yes, accountability is absolutely critical. But they always mean it about other people, right? Holding other people accountable. It's rarely do they sort of realize That's it. It, it starts with themselves. Yes, yes. Well, I found out that when I change, everything changes. Not the other way around. I am a peace ambassador and my world peace campaign is peace within is world peace. Peace mm -hmm. begins with me. So yeah. if we don't find inner peace, there is no way there will be world peace. And we have to get that. And we have to get how powerful we are. So let me tell you, this is based on Ho'oponopono. I don't know if you've heard of it before, but Ho'oponopono is a very ancient Hawaiian art of problem solving that tells us that there is nobody out there doing anything to us. You know, that everything right. is memories in our subconscious mind. Like life is the monitor, you know, or when yeah, you yeah. go to the movies, if you remember. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, those so, days. <laughs> yeah, so the, the movie is a projection, yes? It's not there. So we have to realize that we do have the control of the delete key. And that moment by moment, we are choosing. So we are choosing to talk to the monitor or take responsibility. I'm sorry for whatever is in me or that doesn't work for me. I delete. We do it very easily with, with just repeating, thank you, I love you. Just stopping the stories, stopping the conversations that we have with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the stories that we create. So that brings you to zero. That brings you to present. Um, it has the forgiveness, including because why? For if you don't forgive, you start you live in the past, and mm -hmm. you are with that person that you don't want to let go. So it is about letting go. Yeah. And I have to tell you something that I found out in Japan. 
Uh, in Japan, they told me why when I did business uh, presentations, I didn't put based on Ho'oponopono, or I didn't say it was sure. it had, it had a spiritual component. And I said, in U.S., nobody would hire me because they think <laughs> spirituality is the same as religion. Uh-huh. And, and they told me, in Japan, we wouldn't hire you unless we knew it has a spiritual component. Because uh, in Japan, we know that the foundation of any successful business is a spirituality. Mm-hmm. So Zero Frequency, it's a book that is more for mainstream, for intellectuals. I can still relate to intellectuals. I am coming sure. from the business world. I was not a believer. I didn't believe in anything. And sometimes the things that I'm talking about right now, I know they are maybe different or out of the box mm-hmm. or, you know, or we are even, but they work. I saw them work. I saw them working, even representing people before the IRS here yeah, yeah. And, and defending clients, you know, and getting refunds for them. So I saw how this can work, you know, when you take responsibility, when mm-hmm. you become humble and, and, yeah. and even a children, a, a child again, you know, we have to yeah. become children. Again. So so what was it like when you started this process yourself? Because this is what I think with most people, right? Uh, most people would look at something like this and they would say, yeah, sounds great. I would love to get there. And then they start the process and the start's always really hard, right? It's always a difficult and, and maybe you don't see results immediately or, or you feel funny or whatever. So how did you get over that piece? Because I think that's what people really crave is how do you get, how do you start? And then how do you cross over into being able to actually go on the full journey? Well, I have, to, I have to tell you that if you say it's difficult, it's difficult. If you say, oh, you mm-hmm. have to, pay, because that's how we create in our life. You mm-hmm. know, if you say you can, you can. So I have to tell you, my life completely changed because I started trusting. And that made a huge difference, a whole Mm. huge difference in my life. So, for example, I started my own practice of accounting and tax when I was always an employee before. But because of Ho'oponopono and this waking up, I started my... and, And people, at that time, we didn't have emails yet. Yeah. So it was the telephone and somebody would call me and say, somebody gave me your name and number, told me you could help me. Most of them had audits, you know, problems with the IRS. They would call me. I had to represent them. And I started practicing this in those audits. So I saw it really on on, uh, things that you can actually measure, you know, things that, that you can really see. Because sometimes it's, well, maybe, maybe I'm happier. Maybe I'm more at peace, yes? And you cannot kind of measure that, (laughs) yes? Mm -hmm. So um, I started that. And then I have to tell you, overnight, I decided to let go of my career and dedicate to this new career that I don't have a title for, that, Mm -hmm. you know, that you could think, no, I mean, you... Yeah. And and, and believe me, at one point, I'm going to tell you this experience that I had. At one point, um, I was counting with some income when I decided to let go completely of my career. And um, and one income that I was counting on was gone. And sure, my intellect told me, you will have to go back to preparing taxes. And it was yeah. logical. And it wasn't the end of the world if I had to. Sure. But you know what? I thought, hey, God, you know why I'm here? You know how much I need and when? I'm not going to worry. And you know, John, that became my mantra, yeah? So it's not like I didn't worry anymore. But every sure. time, but when you are conscious, you can you don't buy certain things, yeah? You, you know you have, uh, a, a, you have free choice. So yes. in that moment, instead of buying into the story that this was telling me, instead of going into the fear mm-hmm. and the worry and what I'm going to do, I would look up and say, I'm not going to worry, like a little child. You yeah. know what happened, John? What's I that? started receiving uh, emails. I'm a self-published author, okay? Uh-huh. I started receiving emails from China, from Korea, from Japan. They wanted to buy the copyrights of my books, okay? Mm-hmm. And they would advance money. Uh, I would start being uh, receiving, I started receiving um, invitation from different parts of the world to come to speak and they would advance money, you know, as part of the contract. Yeah. I always had the money. I didn't have to fire any employee. I was able to hire, but because I decided not to worry, not to think about it. 
Yeah. And one of the things you talk about is the, you know, the the perfection of your subconscious mind, right? So obviously a lot of what you're talking about here, in order to make that transition, you have to uh really tap in and reorient maybe your 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 subconscious mind so that it doesn't fill you with the the fear and the anxiety. Yeah. So you talk to it and you say, Thank you, but I'm busy <laughs> or enough. Or you right. give them certain times. I don't know if you ever heard to uh, Dr. Jill Volte Taylor. I love her book, My Stroke of Insight. She had a stroke on the left side of uh, right. the the brain, and she had to kind of re-educate it herself on everything. And one of the things that she talks about is that that's what she says. You know, she gives time to the um, to the mind actually. You know, to talk mm. to vent. You know, nine to nine thirty in the morning and nine to nine thirty at night. And if he if he misses it, he says sorry. Next, next. You know, so you have to in that moment you have to take control. You think you are in control now, but if you are more conscious and you are aware, you will see the signs. Things are gonna start coming to you. We are so used to pushing. We are so mm-hmm. used to. I have to do it alone. You know, I'm alone. I I'm a victim. I have bad luck. So right. keep repeating that. You will make it a reality. Every, you know, life will confirm that you are right. <laughs> yeah, because so I think there was, I, I read a statistic or something in psychology today a while back that had something like it was something like 78 percent of our talk, uh, of our self-talk every day is negative. Something yes. is something in there. It was very high anyway. Yes. And I guess that's that's as you're saying, that's the starting point, is it to shut that voice up? Notice. Stay present. For example. If you are depressed, you are in the past. You know, you mm-hmm. are reviewing things that didn't work, what you, you should have done. You know, the thing of not forgiving. Yeah, if you are worried, you are in the future. We do not realize that all we have is this moment. And what deciding this moment can change your life forever. Yeah, yeah. and it depends on you. Yeah. And unfortunately, I mean, we live in a we live in a, a culture today that I mean, it's a very comparison driven culture. It's a very immediate culture. Like people are on social media, they're always and they're either arguing, fighting, or they're jealous of what other people are going on, or they're trying to project that their life is fantastic and, and all of that is. So, I mean, part of what you would say is is let go of all that. It, it be yourself. So I'm I'm going to tell you another story that it yes, changed please. my life. So I had a Hawaiian teacher for more than 10 years, you know, with this whole Bono Bono thing and, uh, that I mentioned to you. And uh, when I realized, because I never did this to, to change careers, I was really happy with my career. I thought my professional life was working, you know. And uh, so, but the day that I realized I was going to teach, I told him, I said, I'm, go- I'm going to go and take... Um, uh, public speaking lessons. I don't, you know, I'm an accountant. And he told me, no, that will take all your naturality. All you have to be is yourself. John, that is the best advice I have received in this lifetime. Right. You know how beautiful, how easy it is to be yourself? So that means you don't depend on what other people think, what other people say, you know, and, and you pay attention what works for you and you honor mm-hmm. yourself. And that's the best gift you can give others. Show them that they can do the same, that they can be happy too. Yeah, as long as, uh, I mean, I think here's the the problem is sometimes is that uh, the version of somebody's self is not the best version that it could be because they're not really being their true self. They're like inventing another. And maybe sometimes you have to look at the self that they're today and go, yeah, that's not the greatest self. I really need to go to the real self. Yeah, so we need to really love ourselves and accept ourselves because we all Mm -hmm. have unique talents. There is something that we can do, nobody else can, and we need to to get in touch with that. What happens if we work for the money? You know, we we have to unlearn a lot of things, yeah, that we couldn't do what we love. So one question that also was very important for me, somebody asked me, what would you do even if you don't get paid because you love it? And you know what I answered, and I was an accountant. I was just starting with Ho'oponopono, you know, as something personal, you know, for my personal development. But I wrote this, John, many, many years ago. And I put traveling the world 
sharing with other one had helped me. Right. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's fun. It, it's fantastic. And I completely and I, forgot about it. It's not like I went on, you know, with this with this thing in yeah, front of yeah. me. It's like now going back and finding my notes. I couldn't believe I put travel in the world. <laughs> here's here's one thing that I have noticed that um, a lot of people when they try to go through life changes or or whatever that they struggle with, and that is um, sometimes you have to let go of some influences and people in your life that may be holding you back. And people find that very, very difficult to do. Yeah, yeah because, you know, but you need to realize that codependency is no good either. It doesn't make mm. you happy anyway, yeah. yes? It's the same with relationship. You don't have a relationship, you want one. You are in a relationship, you want to let go, <laughs> you know? Or you are in a relationship that you love very much and now you cannot even be present because you are thinking that he can leave you or she can go or, the, you know? So we are never present and we are never enjoying, yes? Because we are mm. always, again, with our stories. So the thing is very important is to let go of what other people think or say. Like I said, we can be the example for others, so the role models for others. Yes. For example, in my case, yes, I was a very angry mother. I was very frustrated. I was unsatisfied. <laughs> you know, I, I was not happy. So the best, the guess, instead of going back and regretting and feeling guilty, even though that I ask forgiveness to, to my children, mm -hmm. you know, many times, but, um, but the thing is to be able to show them how a person can change. And to show them that they can be happy. For example, I love to work with young people because it's like I like to shake them and they say, you can be happy now. Don't waste your time like, a, like we did, you know. Don't go around circles to come back to see that actually everything that you needed was inside of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that's such, a, that's such a critical point. And I think people, like I said, people struggle with it sometimes, but it's like you have to ask yourself about, uh, about what you really want and about are the things surrounding you supporting that or detracting from and if they are and it may not even you may even have to separate from somebody who it's not even their fault it's just the way that you no, it's your choices yeah no no you cannot blame anybody yeah people could have said or done things to you but it's not that is not the problem it's your reaction to the problem yes. the decisions yeah. that you made because now, because now you re, you decided to see yourself as a victim. You you decided. I mean, yeah. they said pain is inevitable. That's part of life. Things are gonna happen because they help us to grow. But suffering is in it's in um, pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. Yeah, yeah. That's very, very I mean? true. You can go through life, you know. Uh, but hey, that's what you want. Are you happy? Well, keep keep doing it. <laughs> And I think the other key point, I think, to, to finish up on here is that idea of being present, because I think that is so critical. And that is probably one of, if not the toughest thing that yes. people people struggle with. I think it was James Joyce. My father used to quote this um, James Joyce quote. He used to say, um, you know, you're living at an arm's length from yourself. If you're not in the present, if you're not in the moment, you're living at an arm's length from yourself. And yes. and I think that's the thing that's really hard for people because, you know, we're always either thinking back or thinking forward. It's very hard to focus on what's exactly. here and now. So if you are conscious every time that you realize, yeah, that you are not, it, you can bring yourself back. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. zero frequency. <laughs> okay. Right. So I think a lot of, <clears throat> besides Ho'oponopono and the famous thank you and I love you, Ho'oponopono, that brings you. I understand sometimes it's not as easy, you know, yeah. to say thank you or to say I love you, but you can, you know, even breathing, even breathing, even connecting, going for a walk in that moment so that you don't keep replaying, yeah? Connecting mm -hmm. to nature. I mean, listening to a song or dancing, you know? You can do so many things in that moment that you realize. Or like I said, thank you, but I'm not buying. I'm busy mm -hmm. now. Enough, you know? You have the power to stop that. And and, yeah. and let really for me it's important let go and let God whatever you understand by God I'll tell yeah. you what it means it means for me or what where I found God I actually found God inside of me I mm -hmm. realized that when I started try, letting go and trusting things started happening to me and I said you know what I'm not doing this by myself so as soon as you make the decision there is a, a universe behind you to support mm -hmm. you. 
But sometimes, again, if you say, I'm a victim, okay, the universe will yeah. support you to show you that, yeah, you are right, you're a victim. Yeah, and I think that's a great uh, thing to to end on is just to reinforce to everybody is yes, I mean the universal support, whatever, uh, however you perceive yourself is how the universe is going to support you. So your thoughts matter, how you feel about yourself matter, what you surround yourself with matters, what you input into your brain matters, and uh, and if you start to pay attention to that, then you know things things will start to change. Well, I was in a peace conference in India. And uh, there were a lot of uh, young people there. So they asked me to say three words, you know, what what would be my message in three words, yeah? So I said, be yourself, trust yourself, love yourself. Mm-hmm. And then everything will come. Yeah. And I would just add one for today is think for yourself. Okay. Don't like don't 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 just accept everything. Think for yourself. Exactly. Um listen, um, listen, Maybell, this has been fantastic. Um, Thank you. um all of all of Maybell's information will be in the her contributor bio. The book is zero frequency. But before we go, please do tell people it a little w- bit more about yourself. It will be available July sixth. <laughs> July 6th it's coming out that's right the book's yes. July 6th so mark that on your calendar I think this is a fantastic uh, a, a fantastic um, book actually fantastic if you buy concept. it that day you help me too <laughs> yeah there you buy go buy it in Amazon <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Help it go. So, fantastic idea. Before we go, um, uh, Maybell, do you want to add anything else? Tell people a little bit more about yourself. I'll t- I'll tell you one thing that it changed my a couple of things. It changed my life. Okay, so mm-hmm. if I don't forgive, I'm hurting myself. I'm not hurting right. the person. That, okay. Um, mm-hmm. What is it? What is important is what I think of myself, not what other people think of myself. Right. And we have everything we need inside of us to to change our life. We don't depend on anybody or anything outside of ourselves to be happy, to, you know, to be at peace. So please look inside. Yeah, that's fantastic advice. So look inside, everything's within your hands. Okay, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline and CRM. Thank you, Maybell. And we'll see you all for another expert interview really soon.